Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saver CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. Today, we have a project that can be created in VCar Pro, but involves some interesting approaches to machining. This should produce a very interesting video. Well, let's get started. The Shop Saber Pro Series CNC routers are very popular within a number of markets, and of course, they're part of our machine tool grade router group here at Shop Saber. Here's what that means the base frames are structural steel, single piece, and all of the machining is done in a single setup on an aerospace mill. That machining process is why you get the accuracy and great edge finishes on these machines. And of course, we use that same technique when we fabricate the gantries. Ball screw technology is an important part of being a machine tool grade CNC router at Shop Saber. Ball screws eliminate play, can handle heavy loads, and are virtually maintenance free. And that concept also carries over to the precision contour guide rails, which also operate with ball bearings. Bottom line is you get better parts with better accuracies because of this technology. The Shop Saber machine control is a standard feature of the Pro Series CNC routers. The control was developed on a robust machine control platform developed with Mitsubishi. An important part of the machine control system has to do with the servo motors and drives that are used. The closed loop digital servos actually include glass encoders that supply an enormous amount of data per revolution. With that much data available and the speed of the controller, you get really high performance on these machines as well as extreme part accuracy. And we were able to accomplish this all while still maintaining that ease of use machine control interface that we're famous for here at ShopSaver. The 10 position automatic tool changer option along with the 10 horsepower HSD spindle is included on this machine. Our exclusive ShopSaver Super Z technology really makes the ShopSaver Pro 4 weight a special machine. It starts out with balancing cylinders which bring you faster 3D machining and faster drilling. It includes our tool plate stiffener system, which really equates to better edge finishes and better accuracy. And finally, all of this is driven by Mitsubishi closed loop digital servo driven ball screws. The Shop Saber high flow vacuum technology option has been included on this machine. It starts out with a table that is totally milled on the machine itself. So it lines up perfectly with the spindle. And also, by the way, it's so accurate, you don't really need a gasket between the table and the spoil board. Now the grid system that we developed at Shop Saber to interact with the spool board itself has about two thirds more flow to the spool board than the typical universal table. So you're gonna have access to more vacuum to hold your parts. Plus the vacuum pump will be able to work more efficiently. Four vacuum zones are part of the vacuum table option. Each vacuum zone is connected through a valve into a frame component that doubles as a vacuum plenum. Then the vacuum plenum is connected to the rear of the machine through a four inch hard pipe to a brand name vacuum pump. The optional part locator pins on this machine makes it easier for you to load and unload the machine. We're going to use the pins in this application to help us align the backside machining that will be required on this project. Now that we've talked about the machine, let's go into the office and look at how we're going to machine an MDF frame with machining on both sides. If you'd like a more comprehensive overview of the machine, we have a walk around video just for that purpose. This project had an interesting beginning. We have several banners like the ones you typically see in the background of these videos, and we needed frames around them. Now we could have simply had them made at a frame shop or we could make them ourselves for that matter. Since they'll be painted, it made sense to make them out of MDF. Using MDF had some other advantages also because it would allow us to use VCAR Pro to create any type of profile we wanted simply by using a tapered ball tool like the Vortex 2215. The application would require machining on both sides, so that gave us a chance to demonstrate the use of part locator pins for backside machining. And finally, the frames will be painted a solid color, so that made MDF a good choice for material. All right, let's take a look at our job set. Now, first off, we're on a four by eight machine and our material is gonna be 49 by 97. So let me show you how to set that up. First off, it's gonna be double-sided, so I click that. 
All right, this is the size of the material, 49 by 97 by three quarters thick, and of course our dimensions are in inches. Okay, we're gonna to touch off to the machine bed, which means the top of the spool board. Okay, we're gonna use the corner down here as the origin. Um, now, when you're using two-sided machining, this is really important, and this has to do with which direction you're flipping it. So we've selected that, and I always type, turn the resolution up to very high, and that's pretty much all you have to do to get the setup started. Okay, so what do we know about our project here? Well, we know the banner is 24 by 48, so it probably makes sense. Let's just put a rectangle up there, and then let's come over here and fill out the dimensions. So 24 by 48. Okay, so we know that. We hit apply. Okay, so now, but I actually want a three-quarter inch ledge on the back so I can attach this from the back. So what we'll probably do is take this geometry, use the offset button, and let's offset inwards at uh, 0.75. So that gives us the inside dimension. And then let's do the same thing. Let's take the inside dimension and we'll offset outwards and we'll put in two and a half and that's the width of the frame. So that's kind of how I arrived at that, okay? Now, when we set this up to cut on the machine, we're gonna cut down here in this corner. So let's do this, let's select this. Let's go to this icon. Let's make sure absolute selected in this corner. And let's make that 0.25 and 0.25. And I did that because I wanted uh, a little bit of room to trim everything up with. So that worked out pretty good, so we'll close. So that's how it's initially set up on this side, okay? Now I'm gonna turn a layer on to show you a profile I've already created. So this is what that is. This is basically what I'm gonna use as a profile, and this is all part of the molding tool pad in VCAR Pro. There's no surface there. There's no surface that gets created. It's just the tool paths that would create that. So here's what we do. We open that icon. Okay, I need to select two things. I need to select what it's gonna be based on, hold the shift key down and select the profile. Then as we go down through here, it tells us where is that position within the material. Uh, here's a tool we're gonna to use. Um, let's see what else we need. That's pretty much it. So let's hit calculate. And what that does is that creates the tool path. And when we run simulation, that's what we're gonna get. So that's the first step is to actually create the 3D tool path. It, it's really that simple. So if you think about it, that profile determines what it's gonna look like. So you have unbelievable flexibility. Now, there's a couple things we ought to do also, is I wanna cut through this line right here. So it's gonna be a profile cut. I'm gonna be using a quarter inch tool, quarter inch down shear. So we'll select that. Uh, we're gonna cut through about 0.7. We don't wanna cut all the way through because when I cut the front out, I want it to still be attached to the middle core part. Okay, it's gonna do it two passes. We're gonna to cut to the inside, and let's do a, uh, let's just put that in, profile, calculate, and there's what's gonna happen. And you notice it did not cut through, but it cut almost through. Now we got one more thing to do, and that's the outside. Let's, let's add one more thing to that. Let's go to our outside. Let's hit the node editor. I want it to start here. So I'm going to say, insert a point and then right click, make the start point. Okay, then turn the node editor off. Now I'm going to do a profile cut. It's going to go 0 0.76. So I'm going to cut through the material. Okay, I'm going to use a 3 8 tool. Be a 3 8 down here. Okay, I'm going to cut on the outside of the line. Now this time we're actually going to add a ramp and a lead. So let's add our lead and then let's come back and add a ramp and tell it to lead in on that ramp. And that should be all we have to do. And we'll hit calculate, and it's warning us that it's cutting through. And if we hit simulation, and if we got our depth right, this is what we end up with. So now we've, we've done the tool path that's required on the front side of our panel. We've done our tool pathing on the front side and we've actually cut this part out. Okay, up here is where you actually flip sides and you can tell it's flipped because it's highlight here. Okay, now remember the direction you flip was set up and set up so we're flipping this side to side. And 
problem is we don't have any geometry over here. So let me show you a little trick here. First off, take this geometry, right click it, and down at the bottom it says copy to other side. So now, when I go to this side, it's there, but it's not positioned correctly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select it, go over here, I'm going to say, okay, I want the corner to be at the absolute position of zero and zero. So the origin. And that's actually defined by uh, the part locator pins. So that's why once, since I cut the perimeter of this part out, it's finished size, then I can slide it over against the part locator pins, and that's what makes the front and back line up. So that's pretty good. Now, I'm going to make one change to the geometry. Let's go in and let's put, let's put a dog bone in these corners. So we're going to select this. And I'll probably put one here and here. And I'm doing that so that I don't have to round over the corners of my banner. Okay, perfect. So there's that. And finally, all I need to do is cut a pocket, and that pocket is going to intersect the cut from the other side, and this piece will be separated. So let's do that. Let's do pocket. Okay, I think I'll use the 3 8 tool. I'm going to pick the geometry that's going to be this and this, and hit calculate, and there's my pocket. Now, and that's all we really have to do. Now, had, had uh, everything been realigned with pins, I could have simulated both sides and you'd see that gap. Because I moved the part, you wouldn't. Okay, so we're happy with that. We've got our front side and our back side toolpath done. Now, all we have to do to output code is select this, select the post, be sure that you add side to toolpath name, and when we click that, it's gonna it's gonna output the programs for each side. All right, so let's take those programs and we'll go over to the machine and then we'll run those and we'll see how this comes out. Our frame project really came out nice. The surfaces are beautiful. Our rabbit on the back side aligned perfectly. Plus, this was a neat way to explore some of the capabilities that are part of eCar Pro. This was also a great opportunity to demonstrate how the part locator pins could be used to position parts for backside machining. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.